So today I want to share news of more updates to Evernote as well as new feature rollouts. Plus, I've collected a lot of feedback on my recent posts about Evernote's new pricing structure and I want to share some of that with you plus some of my reactions. Hi, I'm Dave Edwards, a certified Evernote expert. That means while I don't work for Evernote, I get to test out new features before they roll out and I get to sit in on calls with the Evernote team so I can share the latest with you. I also do one-on-one -on -one consulting with folks who want to get the most out of Evernote, where we look at your system and then design a workflow that will make you more productive. You can find out more about that at DaveEdwardsMedia.com slash Evernote. Evernote is continuing to improve its product. Everyone is still waiting for the magical rollout of version 11, but they've been rolling out some new features gradually. This slow rollout is, uh, is actually intentional because it helps them look at things that are rolled out, fix any problems that come up, and gather feedback as they go along. A lot of developers do that. So let's take a look at some of the things you may already have if you've updated your app, or you'll be getting them soon. First off, the new AI Assistant has been released to advanced and enterprise users, which are you. Uh, they have plans to expand this to more paid users soon, so maybe even if you're not an advanced or enterprise user, you will be getting this feature. So what this means is that you're going to be able to link AI Edit to the AI Assistant. What does that mean? Well, ultimately, it's going to give you better editing because you're going to be able to do more follow-up prompts. Uh, if you don't get like the answer you get, you can follow up with another prompt. So instead of performing um, the action in just one pop-up, the AI Assistant will open a new chat that uses the uh, prompt as the first message. So that's the new development with AI Assistant. The next are improvements to meeting notes. So here we're talking about the transcription feature that you can use. You can record a meeting and then get Evernote to transcribe uh, what has been happening at your meeting. Now, the improvement is that the app is going to remember uh, your speaker ID preference. So that means that when you look at the transcription, you don't have to reset it every time. They've also made the new transcription button easier to find and use. Semantic Search is now available for advanced and enterprise users, but it too is being rolled out gradually to more people. So what this means is that when you search for something, it's going to interpret what you mean. It's going to understand your intent and the meaning behind what you type in. And so what Semantic Search does is they match keywords uh, and, and then they are able to give you better results. There's also been an improvement uh, to the mobile app. Uh, you will be seeing a new insert menu, which kind of matches the, uh, the way it looks on your desktop. They've, uh, they've updated all the icons. Uh, there's uh, like 150 different icons, and they've, uh, they've really improved on some of them, cleaned them up. They told us that, you know, they found that some of the icons that had been in there forever were kind of mismatched in size and shape. And, and so they've kind of cleaned all that up. You're going to find a lot of cool ones in there. And as I said, I mean, if you don't see these things in your app yet, please don't panic. Just make sure you update the app so you get the new releases and then you will get these and other things as they are rolled out. Now, as I mentioned previously, Evernote's announcement for new tiers and prices have seemed to overshadow anything else. In the last couple of weeks, I've done a number of videos on this, and I've invited your comments. I want to take a look at some of them, and then we're going to answer a viewer's question. Mike P. wrote, I'm seriously considering Apple Note. It imports tasks perfectly. The main import issue is I have to change all my tag names to include the tag hierarchy as ENEX. The export does not include hierarchy. There are obviously things I will miss in Evernote, particularly the web clipper. It may just be familiarity, but I probably do overall prefer Evernote to Ample Note, but I don't prefer it 158% more. Okay, look, so. 
Uh, here's the thing. Whenever you transfer from one app to another, I mean, there's going to be some differences. I mean, they're not, you know, all the same. And some things you're going to have to give up. Some things you're going to have to adjust. On a recent video, I talked about some easy ways of exporting uh, your files out of Evernote and and uh, exporting them as ENEX, as, uh, as Mike suggested. But again, it's not absolutely perfect. And uh, you're going to have to make some adjustments as you move the notes uh, uh, to any other app. Uh, much the same that, let's say, you were moving something from uh, another app to Evernote. There would be some adjustments that you need to make. The 158% refers to the price. And again, as I've always said, you've got to make decisions as to what, what Evernote is worth to you. Farm Boy says, as a user of Evernote, I hate this change. We need a medium level subscription. I don't need AI. I've heard that a lot, Farm Boy. Um, I don't know if Evernote is going to um, ever create a subscription level that gives you all the features without AI. I mean, clearly they're not going to do it right now. Uh, they've, they've made a big push. Uh, to uh, explain the levels and why they've created the levels that they are. Um, the one thing I think about this, though, is it's true. Not everybody needs AI. You know, I've noticed that a lot of apps that I use now are really pushing their AI. And uh, in almost every case, they don't say, and we're going to give you a discount if you don't use our AI feature. I mean, it's just kind of rolled into the, into the price, whatever it might be. Uh, the other thing is, of course, it costs Evernote and Bending Spoons a lot of money to add new features. And that's why I'm not entirely sure that they're going to create a version uh, that does not include their AI function. And I do kind of think that over time, uh, core users of Evernote will probably use AI more and more. Uh, Tim wrote, Dave, your video got uh, me checking my account. It turns out I was on the personal monthly account. I just tried to get the personal annual uh, cover and I was given it. It looks like I have another 12 months before the new price rise. Tim, that's great news, Tim. Congratulations. <laughs> You obviously got in before uh, they made the changes. So I think there is a grace period uh, if, if uh, people have been signing up in the last couple of weeks. I don't think the, the new prices have rolled out uh, quite yet. Maybe they have by the time you're watching this video. But Tim, congratulations. Okay, now it's time for a listener question. Dick wrote, I've used Evernote from the outset as more of a, an electronic file cabinet that's cloud-based. I started with this approach from, uh, from more than eight years ago, and I've devised a file naming scheme that's very useful and has been applied for these years. I fully know at the outset that at some point in the future, I would run out of storage space with Evernote. Presently, I have more than 130,000 individual notes. Wow. So my request from uh, your knowledge, <laughs> thanks for the compliment, what is a viable option for this type of workflow uh, of an electronic file cabinet? Well, look, I mean, if all you need is a digital file cabinet, there are alternatives. I mean, for example, I use Dropbox, for example, for what I call my deep storage. Uh, in that, I keep all of the things that I'm not using regularly but might want to use in the future. I keep all my current files in Evernote because I like the search function. But periodically, when I take a look at what's in my Evernote system, uh, some of the stuff I'm just going to move over to Dropbox. Um, and there are certainly other uh, services that you can use that are cloud-based. Now, the trick, of course, is search. Because when you do that, you don't have the same kind of search options that you do inside of Evernote. Uh, you don't have the tagging. Uh, you really then have to rely on the names of the, uh, of the files to get this. Now, some cloud-based services uh, do allow you to do some searching uh, within those files, but, but I found that they're not very good. The search inside of Evernote is, uh, is far superior. So you might want to look at um, another service like Dropbox, and trust me, this is not an endorsement. It's just what I use. You might want to look at a service like that for your deep files, your deep electronic file cabinet, and, uh, and keep everything else in Evernote. Just a thought. Hope that helps. Send me your Evernote-related questions. I'll try to answer them in the future. Uh, just post them below 
Or even better yet, email me at daveedwards at outlook.com. Plus, subscribe by clicking the button below so you don't miss any of my videos, particularly as we wait for the big rollout of version 11. Stay productive. Do you need help using Evernote or setting it up? Do you want it to be the heart of your productivity system rather than just a jumbled mess of notes and notebooks? Let me help you. Hi, I'm Dave Edwards, a certified Evernote expert, and I help clients all around the world with one-on-one -on -one coaching. You show me your system, I'll share my screen, and together we will design your Evernote system so that it's easy to work with and helps you be more efficient. Find out more, including how we set up a free 30-minute Get Acquainted call. Visit DaveEdwardsMedia.com Evernote for more information.